Hello, this is video number seven, and this is the beginning of going over the kinematic quantities. So the first few that I will talk about here are distance and displacement. This should be a short, sweet video. So actually, before I can talk about distance and displacement, every time we talk about quantities in this class, we're going to have to say if it's a scalar or a vector. So a scalar is something that is fully described by a single number with a unit. So for example, you measure the length of your hand and it's nine centimeters. Nine centimeters, that's a number and a unit, that's a scalar. A vector, on the other hand, is something that has a magnitude and a direction. So for example, let's say that you are moving at 60 miles an hour to the right that has a magnitude and a direction. There's an amount to that number and a direction that's actually a velocity that we'll talk about soon. And in this chapter, since we're focused on one-dimensional motion, we can use a plus or a minus sign to talk about direction. So if you're moving to the left or downward, that will be a negative. And if you're moving upward or to the right, that will be a positive. Once we start talking about two-dimensional motion, then we'll have to use an angle to describe the direction. But for now, this will suffice. So the first quantity is actually position, and I went over this in the Moving Man video. So position just tells you where you are. And so it's defined in terms of a frame of reference, which is the origin. So if you're saying your position here is at this point xi, well, that's relative to the origin. Or you can't say, hey, you're located at five meters. At five meters from what? At five meters from my house, right? Something like that. So just uh, also in this picture, you see xi and you see xf here. So we're using the x for the position. The i stands for initial and the f stands for final. So that means your initial and final positions here. And when you're talking about position, the SI unit is going to be the meter, just as when you're talking about a length. And its position is a scalar. There's no direction. It's just a location. Soon, when we'll be talking about vertical motion, then we can use Y initial and Y final to define initial and final positions. The next quantity is distance. So you're probably familiar with this. How far did you travel? So in this case, if you're traveling from ECU up to Williamston, then what path did you take? Did you take the blue path, the shorter path? What distance was that? That was 27.5 miles. Or did you take the gray path that was a little bit longer, 35.8 miles? So the distance, it cares about the exact path that you take, and it's your total distance traveled. So the unit is also the meters, and it's a scalar. There's no direction. Just how far did you travel? Now, what you want to know is the difference between distance and displacement. So displacement is probably a new one for you. Displacement is defined as a change in position. We use delta x here for displacement. And I have a note here, delta means a change in the quantity that follows it. Whenever you see this delta, it means that it's the final of that quantity minus the initial of that quantity. And in this class, I do tend to use a zero for initial. The previous picture simply had an I, so XO or X initial, same thing. It just stands for that initial position. So in this case, when you're going from ECU to Williamston, then the displacement would be represented by this arrow. It's just the distance between the two positions, the straight line, quickest, fastest distance. So it's also measured in meters. But it's different from distance because it's a vector. We talked about a vector has a magnitude. There's a certain distance traveled here. Maybe it was 20 miles. But there's also a direction. You traveled northeast. So let's take a look at this final example here to see if we understand the difference between distance and displacement. There's a picture here of a grocery store, your house, and Pete's Pizzeria. And the positions are given here. So number one, you leave the grocery store, then you go to the pizzeria, and then you come home, back to your house. So what's the distance? So remember, the distance cares about the total path traveled. So you traveled 4.1 miles to the pizzeria, and then you traveled from here to here. Now, you did not travel 3.2 miles to go from the pizzeria to your house. 
the distance between 3.2 and 4.1 is 0.9 miles. So you traveled 4.1 miles and then you traveled another 0.9 miles to go back to home. So when you add up these two, you actually get 5 miles. So the answer is C here. Now what about the displacement? And always feel free to pause the video so you can try these on your own before you see the answer. So displacement, we defined it as the delta x is the final position minus the initial position. So the final position is right here at 3.2 miles and the initial position is at the grocery store, right? So the final position is 3.2, but the initial is zero. So it doesn't matter that you did a detour here to go to the pizzeria. For the displacement, you just went from the grocery store and then to your house. This is x initial and this is x final. And sorry, I used the xi here instead of x zero. I'm trying to use x zero to be consistent. So that means that the displacement is 3.2 miles. So that was choice A. And now let's do example two. You leave your house and you go to the grocery store. So let's take a look here. You're going from your house to the grocery store. So you're going from 3.2 miles to zero here. What's the distance traveled is 3.2 miles. So that is choice A. But now what about the, the displacement? You might think, oh, well, that's also 3.2 miles because we still went from the house to the grocery store that's the initial position, that's the final position. But remember that you went to the left and a displacement to the left is going to be negative. And if you use the definition, the final position is zero and the initial position, you subtract the initial position here is 3.2, you see that that does give you a negative displacement. So the answer is negative 3.2 miles which was actually not one of the choices above. So that's it for this video. Just went briefly over the definitions of positions, distance, and displacement. Remember to look at video number six for the moving man applet where you can see some of these visually and see a man moving to represent some of these quantities. And also in the following video coming up.